Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Milica Kovacevic, Head of Authenticity Committee. And as promised in the previous episode, today we're going to discuss uh, last week's published document uh, about the hand and shin protection. Uh, I told you to prepare your questions about it for this, uh, in, for this week, and we have about an hour to answer those. Uh, in the, uh, in the end, I will be uh, presenting you with the new document in progress about the armor surface. So you can ask questions about that as well, or like we can talk about it if there's time. If not, we can leave it for another session because we hope it's going to be, this is just one of many uh, sessions for the future. So as you notice, this week I have a backup with me, my two senior officers. Um, next slide, please. Uh, if you remember, like talking about the, in previous presentation, we talked about the mission's goals, the AC structure, and uh, in, in order to optimize our future work and improve communication between the fighters. So, um, like we said, you all know that we are here to justify the H in HMBA and to make things fun and edu educational at the same time. So, uh, next slide. We talked about the splitting the, well, not assignments, but splitting our roles in the committee where uh, I will be the, uh, the the supervisor of the committee and as well officer working with them, but there will be a special work groups where we, we will work on documents, revise them, talk to people, work on educational activities. Um, so senior officers are usually the, the ones who been in the committee for years and who had like the most experienced uh, persons here who contributed the most. The rest of the officers are the ones who could engage, like not as much, but hopefully in the future they could become one of the senior officers as well. And the new officer trainees that we're about to uh, accept in our club, so uh, in our not club committee, sorry. So uh, first, I want to thank you all for reaching out as much from previous uh, presentation. We have re received about 20 requests in joining the committee, and we hope that our uh, we, that our group will even be stronger. So I'm looking forward to work with you in the future. Um, as I have mentioned, with me are uh, Lawrence, my uh, previous head of the committee, and Henrikus, who have been involved in this board for years, not only as the officers but as fighters as well. So, uh, hello, both of you. Uh, Lawrence? Hello. Yes. Yes, Just could you tell me, uh, since you've been a national representative for America and a previous head of the committee, could you tell me uh, what, what are your future plans, like after having to resign the committee and dedicating yourself to improving HMBA in America? So what are your future like uh, plans for this and how it's going with America regarding all this situation of cancel tournaments and all. Okay. Um, so with the USA uh, main thing, uh, since I stepped down from the authenticity committee as the head and moved on just to be a senior officer mm -hmm. from that status, I have uh, proceeded to pursue the goal of developing growth in uh, the growth of HMB in the USA. We went from roughly a 50-person membership to over 170 over in the past six months or so. Um, so there's a drastic change in the USA when it comes to where we are focusing the sport. Now we're pr pretty much this, all of USA is into all aspects of the sport would be a good way to refer to it. Um, when it comes to tournaments, we keep on trying to put them on and then we keep on getting canceled. Uh, it's looking like end of July. We should have the first tournament of the season. Um, we'll see if that happens, though. Could get canceled. Uh, after that, we're hoping for uh, in September, we should be having events up in New Hampshire and events in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then there's 
several of like now October and November is jam packed. There's like an event every weekend through November and October. So, so lots of potential things as always potential. Yes. So then, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> and Heinrich is. Yeah. Well, uh, there is a lot of going on at the moment. I mean, it's behind the scenes. <laughs> Basically, uh, the sport, this you know, the full contact medieval fighting, kid is quite young in the UK and it's growing. So at the moment, I see a lot of clubs like forming and you know building up their their training facilities, all that stuff. It's a bit complicated in the UK with the uh, hosting tournaments because of uh, legal issues and all the insurance problems and all that stuff so we rather travel <laughs> we rather go to france you know to fight and, and and basically that's what our main tournament look like you know just going to france over the weekend but yeah we had a plans we have like we we hosting small local tournaments to 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 help to grow community to help to grow fighters because some I'm keeping in, the, in touch with really strong club, you know, with White Company, basically. And uh, the guys are really enthusiastic and they are really keen to, to see, they see a really big picture in UK, you know, with trying to grow it up. So I'm just helping them, to be honest, you know, to, to do all this stuff. And because I have a lot of respect for them and, and they are they respecting me as an authenticity officer, they... They always follow the authenticity rules, and uh, that's what helping a lot. Because if uh, strong team leaders, you know, the teams, they showing that they are following the rules. A lot of small clubs around the world, everywhere, they keen to do the same thing, you know. So it's helping again. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of uh, problems with authenticity in UK, but it seems like everything are going really nicely smoothly now and people are slowly starting to realize you know how it works and what we need to do how to improve so i'm really happy the uh, the last local tournament i went I, I was surprised with the level of authentic you know the armors and and all this stuff you know there wasn't a lot of problems at all you know just small few small things but overall people doing really well so i hope we're gonna keep it up and reach a good results in the future. So, and tell me, just in a short, uh, how uh, how it, it it changed? You know, since you began first this sport, do uh, you notice uh, a lot of difference? And both of you, I mean. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, when I started, let's see, when I started, I started a long time ago. It's about 15 years ago before I moved into UK, so uh, of course it changed. <laughs> Everything massively changed, especially last few years when the the spotlight on the authenticity uh, dropped. So basically we started to improve a lot, you know, and work on it and people started to basically realize what's going on and how it should be working and and stuff like that. But uh, in UK, when, I've, when I started in UK, it was like five years ago, five remember correctly and i'm the only one authentic authenticity officer in uk i i used to have a guy who who helped me a bit little bit you know but he moved out from uk and and i'm being left alone here but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is the people are quite you know very smart and clever people it's, it's a bit easy you know to work with them if, because if you don't need to spend so much time explaining why not, why this, why that. You just generally tell them, like, look, this is the reasons, this is what you need to do. That's it, we're following it, and, you know, you see results, so I'm quite happy with that. It's a bit hard when you're alone, but uh, I have a couple new guys who are keen into getting into authenticity. I hope they're going to help me, and basically we will grow and help the rest. That matter. What matters? Um, as to the USA and the changes, uh, we we got involved basically in 20, 2012. and uh, in my experience, it felt like we went from having good authenticity and standards, and especially in the civilian side, we had a much a higher quality civilian appearance, so on and so forth. Uh, and then 
as the years advance, it seemed like the authenticity dropped because everybody shifted into sports or not. Uh, and on the civilian side, it, it became, you know, shorts that you couldn't see, pair yes. of boots, and your tabard. Um, and so now we have a variety of folks pushing for having better uh, clothing standards in general. And on the authenticity side, well, it's the USA. Um, we're, we're, we're all about the modern stuff. So it's, it's a fun challenge getting people to accept those concepts. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. I mean, but it is important, you know, especially oh. for the new fighters. Like, it's not the same if you go to a festival that, it, that has, like, medieval theme or is a part of Renekman Festival. And when you go to some tournament in the middle of a field where people are just, you know, beating themselves. Like, beating with each other. So, um, that kind of that's kind of one of the things we're going to talk about in the future. Like, the importance of that thing that we are, like, trying to do for years to make it... A historical accurate and uh, to like basically improve the the you know the the, the event events themselves so um, we're gonna start uh, with the the documents now and we'll con can continue the chat after the um, after the qu answered questions of course because we need to do that we only have like uh, 45 minutes so, um, as you already saw it last week, we published documents about the shim protection, and uh, we want you to like. I ask, I have asked you to prepare the questions and ask this this week if there are any things that is there are uncertain or uh, anything you could complain about, or whatever. So, um, bring it on. We're here to answer your questions. We can like scroll. I think th this slide is pretty much clear, right? It's the basic stuff. So let's move on to another slide. As you know, th the topic was a typical set of the second half of the 14th century and uh, until 1430s, the most common set people use. So, um, anatomical source we already like discussed about it so do we have any questions so far no not yet it's okay great <laughs> i guess this presentation will be shorter than we expected <laughs> next one we'll get, we'll get all the questions after i guess <laughs> yeah. i guess i mean probably some of the people haven't seen the documents yet maybe this will draw attention to it if you haven't seen the documents yet, you can you feel free to contact us, like not only the three of us, but the 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 rest of the committee or our, uh, at our pages or uh, private profiles. We're here to answer your questions, and also soon there will be a, a list of certified officers available for you, like especially if you're new and starting, uh, like the bohurt in your country and you don't know who to refer to. If you're an individual fighter or part of a club, you can always reach us out. It's always better to ask than to do something reckless and hate us afterwards. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask, don't, ne never, yeah. never hesitate. There is no stupid question. Is a stupid answer. Yes, yes. We were all there once, probably. So uh, we are also learning along the way. Some of us have some background knowledge. Some of us are enthusiasts and. We all want to do what's best for this sport, what's best for us in like a safety way and educational way and historical appearance way. So bring it on. Next slide. Yeah, uh, we we got a couple questions. We do. So okay. Please. Yeah, please yeah, check. Yeah, your yeah. Page. I didn't check. Uh, it. Can you see them? Okay. Uh, let me just check it uh, here. Do you want me to read them out? Sure. Yeah, go for it, Henry Chris. Yeah, so, okay, we have first question for from Greg Thomas. Hey, so I know you all have uh, the slides and everything where there be actual displays of uh, full armor or an example of uh, accept acceptable sets. Uh, as in uh, examples of an armor, yeah? 
Like examples yeah. of sets. Yeah, 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 for a full set. The passable, basically, for... Yeah, sure, why not? We can put it as one of the future projects for us. Like, make it available uh, on uh, uh, it, uh, authenticity publication page. Like, specific folder where we would put uh, album. Representable yeah. sets of armor. Yep, that would uh, be the perfect yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. And we actually already are starting a thread on that in one of the authenticity committee pages. Yes. Um, there's a guy already starting that. Uh, Baptiste yeah, was Baptiste, starting Baptiste, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. We already discussed yeah, so, it. So the answer to the question, yes, if we are preparing such a document, we're preparing a file with examples where you can see what has been passed in the, in the, in the past, let's say, what we plan to pass in the future, so it's easier for you to pick up, you know, what's the best. Okay, the second question, um, Nikola Saric, I hope I read it correct. Yes, um, you did. Are there any precise measurements, or do we just hope that you say it's curved enough on the on the griefs? I, I I assume. Yes, probably because we're still talking about that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so yeah. yeah. Go on. Sorry. No, no, you go, go on. on, please. Yeah. So with the griefs, uh, the main thing of a grief, it should be sleek. It should sit and fit your leg. Uh, you know, uh, and take the shape of your actual leg. So let's say if you are a slim person and you are wearing curved but big uh, greaves, we most likely can not pass them just because we do look ridiculous on you. So the, the main point is under, to understand that the most armors, they used to be made to fit the person. The, it used to make, you know, to basically exact measurements. Yeah, tailoring nothing, a suit, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nothing too, too curvy or less curvy. Just if, it's, if your leg is very curvy, your grief should be curvy because it should follow all your, you know, lines, basically. So that's the main point of it. You know, if you look at any piece of armor, it shouldn't be bul bulky or shouldn't be like extra, you know, with extra space or something like that. It should sit really nice on you. You know, when it's going to sit really nice of you, on you, uh, when you're going to receive uh, hits with uh, weapons to your armor, it's going to spread better than all the impact. You will not going to feel it. You know, that's what uh, I've noticed over the years when we have like un un unshaped plates on our body, they usually bending and they bring much more damage to ourselves. Because, let's say, wearing uh, the anatomical grief will, will be, first of all, it's going to be much more comfortable. Secondly, it will look be better. And thirdly, it will protect you much better. You will feel less impact than just wearing the piece of tube on your leg. Yeah. So, I, it, if you have anything else to add. Yeah, it's basically the, most, the trickiest part of the armor because of the curves. It has to fit you perfectly in order to do its work, of course. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the third question from Yulia. Uh, does the shin need an edge, basically, in the front, you know, the line? Uh, it all depends what, the, what do you try to basically recreate. Because if I remember correctly, there were, there was a shins without the, that, you know, edge in the front, you know, that curve. But... It all depends what you are planning to, to build, basically, you know. If you are building the Milanese legs, which are obviously had that, that edge in the front, yeah, you're going to have to have this edge and you cannot avoid it. But if you have an example of an armor without the front-like edge, you free yes. to do that as well? again? Always use replicas. You can yeah, al yeah. And always check, even though if you have repli replicas, so... Always check with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a very good point. If you if you found an exa, you know, the source for your armor, your future armor, your your dream armor, always ask us. Ask your country's representative. Don't if they don't, they cannot reply or they don't reply. You can contact us. You can co contact us all over the Facebook at, at the HMB Authenticity Committee publications. Uh, ask us, and we try to you know check check everything and get you the correct answer. Because uh, there is a lot of man manipulations with an armor, so we need to be really careful, you know, because uh, 
the the pieces of armor a lot of them they they we had a, like they've been reproduced where we had a lot of fakes so we need to be careful what we're picking up you know so it's always really health, healthy to ask yeah always. okay uh greg thomas have another comment here uh i bothered lawrence when i when i first joined going through the man manuscripts but yeah full harness will be cool okay cool that's good. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're working on it. So yeah, this is really good to point and yeah, it's a future plan basically. It's going to appear soon. I hope. <laughs> yeah. It's just to explain you why we are so slow because it's really complicated. We are checking everything. We don't want to confuse people when something is posted. You know, when we rush and post something, there are mistakes. And you guys, fighters, are always the ones who found, find them. <laughs> You're always the one who pick on them. So it's, it's a bit hard for us, you know. We need a bit of time to... to it is. We need a time to research. We need to time to double-check it with someone else. We, well, we are basically, all of us, are members of a bunch of groups that work uh, on different parts of, you know, not only parts, but we need to, you know, cover the 500 years area uh, time period of, on everything so um, even like during working on those groups we uh, accept a lot of personal questions in our inboxes and everything and please I just want you to be patient if we don't reply right away like remind us because it is <laughs> hell of a job and even if something is declined and you have source to provide for it, contact us and we will edit it because as we said, like we are researchers and uh, we don't know everything. And there's always some, some new source or something we have missed because it's in another language or it's not as popular or you cannot find it on internet. So please just reach out to us. Cool, uh, we have got uh, another question from Francesco Di Pietro. Uh, are free plate griefs limited to 1360s, 90s continental Europe, Germany, for source reason, uh, or they can be used also in combination with uh, 1410, 4030 armor if they have all the requirements? No, this is the thing. The, this is the point where people start to manipulate with uh, uh, armors. Basically, the free pieces, uh, griefs, we should be only with a Ger Germany, you know, like Central Europe uh, kit, and basically they're limited to 1360s to the 90s, basically. They don't mix them with the 1410s and 30s, you know, kits, because the, the main reason, because uh, we, when we jump through the century, let's say 14th century to 15th century, a lot of things change. In the 15th century, the armor chains changes happened almost every 20 years something new came up and and usually you know it overtook the, the basically every all the armor styles but, and and things like that but uh, yeah with the griefs i would really recommend you to stick to up to the 90s like 1390s that's it don't go over yeah know, because the change of style is yeah 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 because you will start to mix up a lot of styles then and it's gonna be you who will be the one who suffer from this you know because we're gonna you know if we will notice that you're using those grief crystal with something that it wasn't supposed to be so used ask you to replace it and let's uh move on on the panels let's get to like the, the sure. third panel um yeah the and then right. do some more questions like yeah, yeah. a couple pages in yes okay that way they can see other images and ask yes. different questions. Okay. As you can see, like some of the stuff are forbidden, just to make clear, and some of them are not recommended because of your own safety. Uh, we cannot forbid you all if it's historically accurate, but it's not safe for you. So please take our advices like as something that is in your best regard to um, work on. Oh. Or it's their own personal responsibility that they chose not to yes. armor the back of their leg. Yes. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, another question, Ashi Fantastic. Uh, what are historical correct mounting methods for greaves? Uh, it depends what kind of greaves do you wear and what kind of legs do you wear. Because let's say the full plate armor, we used to have a pin which is were connected to the your chausses. 
you know, uh, the, the upper leg and it, it used to hang on the, mainly on that, you know, uh, pin and so, like uh, laced with, um, with a leather strap over it. But uh, like you can see in the, the panel that we have up right now on the two plate panel, you can yeah. see there's yeah. a little leather tab that sticks up and that's where they tied through. Yeah. Uh, and then you yeah, have yeah, the yeah. small buttons that are sticking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So usually it's huh. a pin which the chows have a hole in it and the pin goes through it. So that's for a later style armor. For an earlier where we have a mix of a, like a splinted upper leg with a, with just played grief, uh, it's usually the lever straps. It depends, you know, what, what, what kind of knee you're wearing. So you, you can attach it to the knee, you know, you can strap it to your padding, you can strap it to your leg. It's, it's up to, there is no, I mean, it's, it's all depends what kind of style of, you know, the leg you have and that, that, that's where the main question. Yeah. Okay, next question. Visit Kotor. What are rules for brigantine and splint greaves? We're okay, going to so, get to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We there, there are in this document. There is a section for a greaves, basically. So uh, we're gonna get to that, and I'm gonna explain you fast. So be patient, please. Uh, Ashy fantastic. Yes. Oh, sorry. Can we move uh, for to the next slide if the three plate panel is uh, clear so far? Yeah, well, yeah. Here we are the splinted legs, basically splinted greaves. So uh, as you see the. As it's been mentioned, that the greaves must be uh, curved. Yes, as well. So no. basically, no straight plates that we used to see in a lot of tournaments. Where a lot of armor armors used to do. It's very quite easy, easy way to do it. But you know, it's from now on we expect to see more, more like curved greaves would take shape of your leg. As same thing with a uh, plate greaves. And with a splintered grease, it must take shape of your leg. So uh, it must look sleek and, you know, not not be bulky or falling apart or th something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, again, uh, Ashi Fantastic is, is four, uh, sorry, is four panel plates legs not possible? Four panels. Uh, it's going to be possible if you're going to show me the source and we will discuss <laughs> in each. Uh, yes. Four, four plates. I can't remember. It's not on my mind. We need to check. Maybe it's even possible, but... Well, you it, can always well, contact us. Yeah, yeah. actually, don't be... Don't hesitate. Send us uh, pictures if you got, you know, soft sources. We will discuss. Maybe we can add something so you will help us. Yeah, uh, uh, that's all at the moment. That's all we, we got. Go for mm -hmm. work. So, next page. Page. Yeah, here we so, are. Yeah. Really good example. Yeah, you can distinctly see the difference between an anatomical design versus uh, the straight. Um, another thing for everyone to take note of: we don't see the inside of the brig. So whether that is a single strip of steel or whether that's a cased greave that has fabric over it or that's a bunch of small pieces done in a weird way that happens to look like that top one, all that matters is that it looks like the top one. Um, yeah, and make so, sure it's safe. <laughs> yeah, it's safe, of course. It has to be safe. But, um, but it comes down to the idea is we need the appearance of it looking like that. So there are definitely, while that's, yes, that's a complex curve to accomplish, but you can achieve that with two plates easier than you can do it with one, um, so on and so forth. Just something for you guys to think about. Yeah. Can we move on? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, like we mentioned, <laughs> the common mistakes. I don't, I, I believe, I, I hope I don't have to explain all this to you. I mean, it's basic not, what not to do, like doing the fantasy non-anatomical armor with straight plates and mixing different regions. Like we already mentioned, do not go over the like centuries or 
do not mix. I know the, the certain rule is like 50 years of difference, but it's a tricky situation and we're going to try to make it more clear for you in one of the future slides. And it's a thing we're going to work, uh, work more about, like making things. The, the points of this presentation is like making you as well, like in a way it should be educational for your future possible armors or sets or your own armors so you could see what would be the best solution if you are planning to do specific um, um, well if you want to get a new armor or want to fix your old armor and don't have to you know um, I'm forgetting the words <laughs> yeah let's so go good. basically yeah I'm, I'm shutting down. We're gonna yeah. help you. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. We're gonna help you. I mean, we are here to help. We're not here to stop something. I mean, we want to help. You know, we want you to look nice. We want you to perform nice, as you can see and be from safe. the. Yeah, and be safe. At the same point, you can see from the strongest teams in the world. Look at them. They look really spot on. Uh, the authenticity, authenticity, what they're wearing, it's really nice, really cool, and they manage to win, and they manage not to get serious injuries. What I've noticed, the most serious injuries are, are coming from the bad quality, unauthentic stuff like that, you know, what the people love to buy, I don't know why they like <laughs> to buy this, it's, it's a bit of a, uh, I don't know, like self-hate, you know, because... Uh, if you buy something like this and you you cannot trust this armor, it can break, it can bend, you know, you can cut yourself or some or you know similar things. But yeah, what I've over the years, what I've noticed that somehow the historical kit, which looks like it's not safe, it's actually safe. It do it does its job, you know, because um, it's probably that's why there it was created, you know, in a. Yeah. In, in in those in the like medieval times, I mean, it yeah, was of course, the, purpose. Their it life was, was actually in like in proper danger, so they yeah, had yeah, to yeah. find it. Yeah, so you see, the some some of the pieces we because the sport, uh, what we have now, and the actual fighting, it seems like that we used to f fight more like we used techniques of stabbings. Nobody wanted to like you know like cut each other like we do now because we don't have sharp weapons. So if we compare some armors, you know, let's say why visors had really small eye slots, you know, and holes, because it used to be common thing, let's say, you know, in the battlefield, you could get the stabbed with a dagger through your eye slot, and that's it, game yeah. over, you know. So uh, now what we do is a, it's a bit a different thing, you know, like they, at the moment, Hima, you know, do something like they, they're like, recreating this kind of fighting, you know, what I've noticed, it's really nice, you know, you can see the examples of uh, fight styles, in, you know, between two, but, yeah, but what the main point is the armor used to make, they, they've been created to protect the owners, yeah, they've been created as well to look nice, but uh, at the same stage, they, they, they've been pr protecting from deaths. Nice. Could we go... Uh Next slide. I think this is pretty clear. Henricus, could you check the questions? Yeah, we don't have any at the moment. That okay. was the last. Okay. So, uh, like, uh, this section here is mostly uh, late Eastern armors. Um, basically, almost no one wears any of the armor that's appropriate for these legs. Yeah. But it's possible that someone might choose to come out of one of these kits again. Sure. Um, I mean, they, I think Australia might have a fighter who still comes out in a Krug suit. Typically, this armor is excessively heavy. So that's the reason why it's starting to disappear out of the sport. Yeah, but sh people should have options. So we're always oh, going to yeah. try to work on that, you know, on Oriental and Eastern armor. So, um, I think everything here is clear. It's mostly the replicas or museum examples because we don't have as many examples yeah, to show you beside these. No one is using it, like Larry said. So could we go on? Easter armor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. basically... Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get to the Lord. Okay, yeah. So, and like these, uh, we're basing these more off of a couple pieces of artwork. And in relation, like in the artwork, it's not 100% clear what they're wearing, but we combine that with the later armor that we just saw on the previous slide. And that's where the historic concepts of these come into place. The greaves in the top right are from uh, the Battle of Kulakovo, probably murdering that. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, say that again? Kulikova. Okay, I'll just, you got hey, it. it was, it was good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, these are good, decent protection for and allows for an easy combination of the sabatons uh, that are easily documented with the the Eastern style of armors. So, yeah, that's really nice examples, to be honest. Yeah, pretty good. You know, it's something like that. You know that. Uh, I very often see this, uh, you know, people like coming out with very sleek, slim line, you know, greaves, legs. Oh my God, it's like sexy, you know. <laughs> it looks so good, really, on the field. It's cra it's amazing, and and people actually fight with it and get the good results, you know. So I I look at this kind of examples and I, I I make sure, you know, I just pass it to the people that it's possible. Don't tell me it's not, because I've seen someone did it. Yeah, and he yeah. did really well, you know. So if it's, if the bad armor are, is not an excuse, basically. Yeah. Can we go on to next slide in order to do both of the presentation and answer all the questions? Well, all three presentation. <laughs> okay. So yeah, go if, <laughs> even if you have more uh, questions about the shin protection, you can ask in comments or ask later. So now we're going to take a quick look on the... Ha gauntlets and mittens and uh, make things more clear for you if there is anything to ask so bring him on just to make, yeah just to make sure before you start asking questions because i've been asked many times why do we allow the you know the mittens and such a style of armor with a like let's say uh, 14th century middle of a 14th century where it kind of didn't exist you know or something like that the simple reason why we allow such a gauntlet is there is not a lot of them existing and it's really necessary protection for fighters yeah why we pick up on your helmets because there are a wide variety of helmets you can pick up for any kind you know there is a lot of visors available there is a lot of you know all kind of the helmets available except gauntlets we don't have a lot of you know examples and we want you to be safe that's why we we do allow you know mittens to go with uh, almost every kind type of armor yeah so these are the armors that was uh, like uh, mentioned in this document could we go in the next slide uh, just one question uh, about the, we come back to the Eastern style greaves. Okay. And this is really good point. It's a bit, uh, you know, you need to work on it. But uh, Eduard Shakutinov, uh, hey guys, uh, nice to see you. Please mention the possibility of wearing Western leg uh, legs with rust Lithuanian kits. Yes, correct. Uh, the most... Uh, <laughs> The Lithuanian kit is where you can really build up with a mix of uh, all kind of like Eastern armor and the Western armor because it was the point where the most of uh, uh, it was uh, actively how to explain that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, basically, the Eastern style and the Western style uh, collided Combined, in the yeah. region. So that's why you can use. Uh, western style legs with the uh, eastern style to tops let's say with a uh, dalman style armor with uh, some like mongolian helmets you can but you need to make sure it's made nicely again it it looks good and everything following crazy because i've, I've seen attempts of lithuanian kid some really crazy attempts with a byzantinian armor and and things, uh, similar things. So we, you need to be careful with that. Yes, it's possible, but it's really 
you know, it's it's possible, but it's really, really, really complicated area because we don't have a lot of uh, re we don't have a lot of sources from the Lithuania existing like in the 14th century. There is only literally two or three pieces of armor, a small plate, which which have been found in, in let's say Lithuania in Vilnius, and we cannot basically rebuild anything from it. Yeah. So we're following the some some interventions with the Russian armor, the Mongolian style, something from the German orders, you know, because we, there was like Livonian order around, like, so yep. it's, it's mixed, yeah. And because we have to go faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, so the George, yeah. so-called George segment has played gauntlets. I think everything is clear here. We have, uh, well, basically, not living examples, but as we can see, there are proper you know, sources for it, so not much to explain. Yeah, 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 if you plan to get uh, an, an, like, similar gauntlets, this is a good example, basically, you know, follow something like that. Yeah, very document, very well documented and uh, not many questions about it. No. Yeah, despite there are questions about actual statue of St. George, <laughs> but I, I'm just gonna be quiet for now, you know, we, we allow those gauntlets and, you know, they are... They're good to go. Yeah. Next slide. So yeah, the hand protection. Late mid. Yeah. Yeah, it's ba basically calf calf thing. As you see, the the ones which are declined, they are kind of uh, connected with a free or yeah free segments. So this is it's not existing and it looks uh, crazy and uh, I think it's too heavy, it's not necessary if a calf made correctly, like you, we can see examples, it will work even better than that the sport optimized thing that we see there. So, okay, we can continue and if there's any question, we can come back to it later. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll let Yes. Yeah. Okay, guys. I I just oh we got a couple of questions. So, okay. Right. First question, Daniel Felipe. Daniel Felipe. Guys, congrats for this work uh, you are doing. Uh, a question. We know smaller tournaments have a lower level of com compliance to some historical rules. So one could say probably that safety reserved. Someone. Uh, some authenticity uh, normative impo impositions could be tolerated. I mean, it for Bohor Challenger, for example. Uh, if yes. I under yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, well, Open and Challenger does have a slighter, you know, uh, easygoing uh, approval rate so far. Uh, but all depends, of course, on the tournament. Uh, so far. As I mentioned in our previous uh, presentation, Bokhur Prime and Bokhur Masters are the like very have a very high level of authenticity uh, checkups, like online and offline. Where Challenger and Open, well, it's still work on prog in progress. We hope and we will uh, try to optimize the mm, how should I say like approval process for such. Uh, uh, tournaments as well. What is allowed and what is like a really big no? Because I've seen a lot of those tournaments and there has to be lines somewhere. But we can talk about that like more in the future. Like you can always contact us regarding that. And uh, depending on the number of participants, or we will like make some kind of personalized uh, approval process for you. Like. And, of course, if you have any officers, because the officers on all the tournaments are a requirement now. So. Cool. I hope we, I hope that's, that, that's helped. So, another question. Francesco Di Pietro. Hi, Francesco. Hi, Francesco. We all have you. <laughs> <laughs> so, first question. Um, for Tristan Gauntlets, optimized sport mittens, is it, uh, is it allowed to use it also with a 1350 set 
with B slash raw, or only scale hourglass gauntlets for that time. Other mittens, uh, mittens type uh, like uh, Milanese St. George could be used on 1380s. So basically question is what they should be using uh, with a 1350 kit. Uh, we do prefer see the, the scale gauntlets, but uh, we don't, I mean, the three stunts we like sport optimized, nicely sport optimized gauntlets, we, they also going to be allowed to the tournaments. Uh, to sorry to to go with the kids, uh, you know, a bit earlier and stuff like that because yeah. um, you just need a protection. I think a, a a good answer might be is like the Tristans would be acceptable, but the um, finger mittens, as we call them, or caterpillars, is some of the terms I've seen some of the fighters use. It's like uh, on this screen, the bottom right. Those oh, yeah, would be what would be the fine. optimum choices for that era. Um, cause we are not really f too much a fan of the scale either for 1350 because, well, the scales are usually built very badly. Yeah. Well, so, th this is yeah. the thing. If you will have really nice reproduction, it will go, but yeah, usually it's really hard to build safe scale gauntlet, which look nice. So that's right. the problem, you know? So, okay. Right. We've got, uh, e wait, wait a second. Uh, over mid. Midden types, Milanese St. George could be used on 1380s. Milanese, no, not for 1380s. Milanese gauntlets should stop. I wouldn't pass them to, to, to 14th century. They should stop with the uh, 1400s. Early, early Milanese, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because with the it, shorter cuff. There is actually a slide with it. Uh, maybe you could uh, switch yeah. to the next slide, Alex. So yeah, yep. we're talking about early Milanese up to thirteen. Oh, yeah, the early ones. Okay. Yeah, I think that so was basically. I don't know. This slide should uh, answer all the questions. To be honest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the main ma the main thing here is a uh, size of calf. And yes. It should be sleek and nicely shaped, basically. So. Uh, okay, we've got another Daniela Felipe. Thanks, militia and guys. In those cases, we Brazilians are working on the reporting these cases in order to check that kind of uh, deadlines we can require from our fighters. Okay. Uh, well, like we said, uh, since the current situation and economical crisis and everything, uh, all the published rules... Uh, like when we publish the rules, we ex accept them to be like on uh, uh, to start to imply on the, the tournaments in six weeks, uh, six months after it. But uh, we're gonna, since the COVID situation, we decided to move it all to at least for a year, like to, until the next Battle of the Nation. And for some lower class tournaments, even maybe a bit more. But we, we, we can inform you about that uh, after it, or we can, uh, like, all the things you can see in this slideshows, they will be available to watch offline, and also there will be a short uh, review of this video in one of the future posts, so you can always ask afterwards, so. Uh, anyway, whatever you're planning to do or ask question, it's always very good to ask it as soon as possible or do it as soon as possible. Don't drag, don't wait till the whatever deadlines there are, just ask now and yeah. it's going to help you to avoid problems in the future. Yeah. Uh, another thing just uh, pointing out by the Eduard Shalkutinov, um, also we, there is uh, some parts of uh, Western Brig outlands from Novgorod, maybe it's a uh, base to create something aesthetic instead of uh, ugly fantasy ones. Yes! If we will see something, you know, recreated really well, we're going to use it as an example and we're going to tell everyone, like, this is, yeah, you should go. But at the moment, I, I, I never seen anything like... If you right. will have an, haven't any kind of... A, re yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen if a good you, reproduction yet. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> They're only sources. Uh, Eduard, if you have seen one, send us message, send us fo photos. We, we're glad to see it because at this stage... Nothing. <laughs> Next slide, please. 
We don't have much time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Scale gauntlet. Right. Say so next slide again. Yeah, it's pretty clear here. Clear, yeah, yeah everything. That's again very clear. That's the most common gauntlets we've got in, in sport at the moment. The ones are going to be declined. So we, see, are, we are stuck questions about it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, if you got questions, yeah, you can ask them. But as you can see from example, you know, it's pretty clear how it should look like, where where it should start and finish, that it's quite long yeah. gauntlet. From Not the like following, boxer gloves. Yeah, following the following example. Uh, sources. Uh, okay, we got another question from Nikola Saric. Uh, will you tolerate fighters wearing canvas over their Ill illegal gloves? No. Uh, wearing what? No. Sorry. No. Right. Uh, <laughs> just no. Canvas <laughs> just to pre yeah. There is. Uh, yeah, I think we should add the, this point to the to the uh, to the slides that the you know any kind of covering. I mean the. I, don't, I cannot imagine covering of uh, illegal gauntlet, you know, to cover it with a canvas to look like it's it's like made out of uh, material, I don't know, fabric. No, I don't think so. It's a good idea. I, I think it's better to get the legal gauntlet. I don't... The question is, what do you call illegal gauntlets? What, the gothic ones going with a 14th century kit? Uh, well, I I'll probably... Know. These scale gauntlets that, like, most of the fighters have, so it's going to be the biggest problem from there now. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I, I've stopped because it's a longer question. I've just stopped in the... I'm just going to carry on. We had a green light last button, Battle of Phoenician. Some mittens are just too good not to be worn. We all just, just like knowing our options so we can respect the AC while using the equipment we love so, so uh, take note that doesn't the ban does not go into effect for bought until 2023 you have three years to upgrade three years yeah you, yeah you use them break them now you need yeah. new ones you have three maybe years. even two in between <laughs> yeah <laughs> well usually gauntlets similar gauntlets we just got them you know smashed over a couple of years you know really rarely to see the gauntlet lasting long. <laughs> yeah, last longer. So could we move on to the next slide? Okay. That's the, yeah, that's complicated part because of, uh, as you can see in the source, one of the source have uh, someone where you like a man wearing it without the, any kind of protection and we have an existing sources with uh, actual with plates like finger plates and you know the the chain mail basically it's possible to to do something like that i personally uh, as an ex fighter i wouldn't recommend to wear something like that <laughs> because that's going to end up in the pain but you know if it protects and you like it yes like it said to, like all the recommendations are there that doesn't mean it's forbidden, but it's for your own safety. I mean, we cannot forbid the historical sources, but it's on your own responsibility if you want to hurt yourself and not wear the something that would, might actually yeah. look good and protect you as well. Putting roundel over the fingers will not going to help with this one because we're going to remove that roundel. It's, it shouldn't be there. And uh, as, you, uh, as you can see by from the sources, this is quite late gauntlets, you know, the... They yeah. are Milanese, and, 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 you know, they should be worn, to be honest, with the full plates, and yeah. that's a uh, bit, you there, know, that's, go on. There, there's at least one armor who makes the this design with the fingertips as a one solid piece, but it still looks like fingertips. It's like, that yeah. would be a safe version. Um, safe version, yeah, but I think you will build kit fit those gauntlets or you want you know the gauntlets for your kid and they should look like this yeah go with them but make sure they are safe basically and yeah we have a sword so it's good to go okay so next slide okay please. uh M marco juniga have a question i'm sorry if i pronounce it wrongly because i don't understand all the <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce all this thing. so um 
So we have three years to change the gear that is no longer accepted, like round gauntlets. Only gauntlets. I Only mean, gauntlets. It is, yeah. It is mentioned in the document. In each document, there is a deadline for uh, changing it and a class of tournaments that is uh, referring to. Yeah, because some helmets their their you know their ban comes like from next button and, and yeah. things like that. So like it's not for all the armor. A year ago or more. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. just for a gauntlet three years, and from the future, I guess you know whatever we're gonna publish any new documents that's gonna be extra. You know, year we're gonna allow people to basically get rid of them and get the proper stuff. Cool, so next, that's more for East, I see. <laughs> yes, yeah. and with the Eastern, it, mostly, as you can recognize, they look a lot like the Western gauntlets. We're just asking for an aesthetic change. Yes. Um, like, I would still want steel plates underneath that chain that you see there. Um, I do not, you know, this is just to match the very, very few Eastern gauntlets that are found to be documentable, because yeah. they pretty much do not exist. Um, in any historic documentable sense, so mm, uh, just the, basically the help to the fighters, <laughs> as yeah. I see yeah. from for Eastern, yeah, yeah, because it's again, you know, with the East, you know, with the gauntlets are, are really painful, uh, I, painful point, you know, where we don't have a lot of uh, sources for a really good gauntlet, usually yeah. something like finger gauntlets. And, yeah. Next slide. Next, please. Well, late armor and like uh, oriental armors. Like we said, there are not many uh, Bokhut fighters who do this uh, time period, but still, there is an option like in Shin document. And they must, must match the rest of your set, which should like refer to the rest of the. Uh, pieces of armor as well, like everything should match your time period, but these particularly because they are very distinguishable and different from like even in the like, 10 or 20 years or 30 years difference. So, next. Yeah. So, these are just a few examples of uh, the, the, the proper hourglass shape in size, and I think that's pretty clear so far. We already had the examples. It's a similar thing to like uh, the, the anatomical. Well, not it's not anatomical, but it is more authentic and uh, shouldn't look like robot yeah. hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like can you know you put the can. Yeah, yeah. And it does. And just, yeah. Totally. Basically, it should look like nice. You know, it should have a shape. Yeah. Uh, in a, in a medieval time, people love shapes. They loved it. So <laughs> yeah. it would really be nice to see those shapes. Because not even on in armor, you know, you check the paddings, you know, for in uh, everything for in defense. fashion in everything. It's amazing. Yeah, 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 everything. That's why they they wore the hoses re quite quite you know like shaping, and and all the stuff because they loved it. Of course, you know, the, the, the people used to look a bit different <laughs> back then, but still, still, we try to keep similar style, you know, and just yeah. keep those curves very nice. So, continue, please. Okay, I think these are pretty clear. Yeah, as clear as, and it's not clear, cause, because uh, I guess a lot of people have a lobster gauntlet and... You know, if you have any questions, if you are in doubt of your lobster gauntlet, contact us. There are sources for a later century, I mean, for a later period, like, uh, you know, the middle 15th century. There are some sources for, you know, some gauntlets. If they are done correctly, they will, they will pass. But nothing like you see in examples, we're not going to pass because they're ugly and just fantasy. Continue, please. Next slide. Right, uh, Yuli, I have a question. I would like to know more about why the ban on the rounded uh, gloves, uh, I guess, rounded gauntlets. Um, 
it's not so much a ban on the rounded gauntlets as much as it's a ban on those rounded gauntlets in those images because those have no historic aesthetic and appearance whereas you can find some that are documented i think that i think uh the one saint george the other saint george statue not the one in this set of directions i think he has a bit rounded style but it doesn't look like the ball that those previous designs were yeah, once again, if you have the, the source for something, please feel free to contact us. And uh, even though if you're not sure, we can make sure to like see the difference and distinguish one of one others. So, I've got two more questions. I think the, the, how, what how much time do we have? Well, we're, we're past time. We're so. past time. Okay, time, okay. But, so let's say but, those gonna be two last two questions. Okay. So, uh, Edgaro Andres Lopez Sanchez, I hope I read this correct. In the first photo for Hourglass, the wrong thing, there is, a, there is the size of the excessive angle of, on the wrist, of the wrist. Uh, Could you, yeah, this, this so The first picture of the Hourglass, Hourglass gauntlet. This slide? The wrong thing. There is a size of. There is a size of excessive angle on the wrist. I can you can you like explain a bit more, Edgardo? Yeah. Meanwhile, let's answer the other question. Uh, well, okay. Julia, or not Julia? What's the name? Um, replies. Uh. Dusty Franken question. It says Polish, but it's first counted. Uh, but is it the one that the hourglass? Like I don't really understand what exactly do you want. Thinks it's the hourglass on the first image on the left. The hourglass has it wrong on the first image on the left. It's the proportions. And the it's the unfinished shape and the thumb design are the main issues there. Whereas uh, in a discussion we had with someone, the gauntlets on the on the second over from the left, uh, those gauntlets is it's it's basically a, for lack of a better word, I will, as I said in another conversation, it looks like an hourglass that had too many cheeseburgers. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, like he, he's just sent the, it's unclear to me what's wrong with the leftmost photo. So right. I guess... Uh, 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 I believe there's also the joint part, you know, uh, of the, you know, shape. The Yeah. Well, it's basically the bottom line. The hand protection should be neatly made, be polished, and have fitted segments. You can see how the segments are staggered. It's certainly not polished. Um, and the thumb is very poorly designed. Yeah, it's everything is very poorly. You know, all the plates were not shaped. They don't fit nicely each other. You know, the, the thumb is terrible. If you will go fight with this thumb, it's going to be broken in, like, no time. So I don't recommend that. And basically, yeah, this is just... Okay, okay, that's all good. All right, we're going yeah. to the next question. Next. It's, all, it's all good. Uh, so um, Dusty Franken, it says polished, but is it okay if it's just clean and not polished? Well, Let's that's actually... Let's get to the next page, next yeah. section. Next. <laughs> next slide. There we go. Yeah. Okay, okay. no, no, we, we skipped no. a few, so yeah. Yeah, Let, let's just skip to the finish, yeah. No, no, uh, let's just uh, have uh, two slides on the back, because we skipped the under, uh, yeah. Oh, under gauntlet, yes. Yeah. Under gauntlet, yes. And forbidden stuff. But we'll there do we it go. last, yes. yes. So, it is not required that your under uh, glove be, like, completely authentic, but it should, like, uh, re resemble the authentic style. Of course, it's not going to be seen over, but it shouldn't be any different colors. Uh, it has to be made sorry, of safe I'm materials. Sorry, I'm, I'm just going to interrupt straight away because he didn't say about the inside gauntlets. He, he, the question was, it says polished, but it's, is it okay if it's just clean and not polished? 
Well, it depends. How, we, we, we cannot tell you that until we see her. It is allowed to have... Uh, do you, did, did he mean like uh, forging marks? Yep. We don't know what he means. We need an image. We can't yeah. answer that you question can contact us on without our, actual yeah, what on, he's, uh, what This is a publication wants. page with an image so we can reply you straight away. So Okay, we go to the next question. The metal headed uh, is articulation on the wrist of a gauntlet allowed if it's only uh, is it only the single cuff? So can I, be the, the hinge articulation allowed on the cuff, you know, on the gauntlet. I believe uh, in the I believe we, the sources we went over and like uh, uh, Arcadia's provided a source where a single point of articulation was allowed. And actually the first image in this set of rules for gauntlets also I believe we show has a single point articulation. So I believe we're good on that one at present, I believe, based on the sources provided so far. Yeah, yeah, all, all depends yeah. from the source. If you have a source for it, show, show, you know, just show to Lawrence or, or anyone from Authenticity Office and we will be able to, you know, give you a more clear answer. Okay, Nicola Saric, uh, a quick one. Do hourglass gauntlets have to, uh, to actually have a separated fingers or they can be from the single piece of metal shaped like fingers? Yes, they can be from the single piece shaped like fingers. The main point, it looks good from the, you know, from the distance we can see that it looks like the finger, like hourglass gauntlet. So, yeah, it can be done from one piece. Uh, Eduardo Andres uh, Lopez Sanchez, it's unclear to me what's wrong. Oh, sorry. I'm very sorry. I just jumped over the questions. Ludwig Zagosda, sorry, it was uh, already asked. Uh, is that possible to hide a mitten with fabrics? We already said like no. For, for Eastern Armour, where a, uh, there are barely nothing about hands, uh, and I don't want to wear some visible European mittens. So that's for a Eastern style. Upgrade to the finger mittens with chain. Chain can cover a bunch of stuff on, on if you have Western gauntlets, and we will allow it. It is mentioned in the document. So that will be all for today. I mean, you can always ask us afterwards on uh, the uh, in our web page, uh, well, publication page, or ask your officers, uh, or reach us. And now uh, I need to, well, we will introduce you with the work in progress. It's about the armor finish. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, weapon surface document. Next slide. Um, I'm going to be real quick because we have passed our, you know, um, one hour of uh, presentation. Uh, the appearance itself is very important for the next kid. So next slide, please. We all know that. We're just going to show you a couple of examples what won't be allowed and uh, how your armor should be maintained. Uh, you can save your questions for later and have in mind that this is still a work in progress and there will be, it will be uh, improved. So any visible parts of armor have to have adequate finish. As you can see, these are pretty, uh, well, not the, the forging marks are not that good, especially for these uh, sets of armors. Yeah, go on. These are just examples. Everything must be polished. Who? Oh, nothing here. Okay. <laughs> Let's go faster. <laughs> okay, not sure what's with that. It was good earlier. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yep. Something is with the connection. From problem. existing sources, we can see that the, the armors were pl planished and they usually were really smooth. So all the modern, you know, lazy and finished armor pieces where you know where you 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 seen in the previous examples we're not gonna pass now because you know we just unfinished yes so, but yes. i i believe we're gonna ha have a question when armor start to look like this after some time let's say we got the new helmet shiny it's got beaten up i i would say beating up it's okay if you like you know you you, you planish the back you know all the dents and it start to look like rough it's okay but do not buy the helmet which 
doesn't have a polished surface. Basically, yes, it's from the new. If 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 armor send you over the unfinished helmet, send it back. Ask him to polish it because it's yeah. not gonna pa pass in the future. Yes, like really slight uh, trace marks are allowed, as we saw on the previous documents. But as we know, the further it goes in, like late 15th and 16th century, you don't have unpolished armor. You don't have any traces of uh, slightly forging because everything is perfect. They paid attention to details, they paid attention to everything, so uh, any kind of uh, uh, slight forging marks won't be acceptable in 16th century armors or further. Okay, we yeah, have some ar armor, armor used to be some really fancy thing and really expensive, and you know, there are people who, who, who in like armorers, they, they, they put all their life in, the, in their job, you know, so... Yeah. It's not something. There cool. were actually images of people who just did the armor polishing. Like there are sources for that. For that, like sitting there and like grinding and yeah. making armor yeah. perfect, and they were like uh, paid especially for that. So uh, as we can see, mirror polishing on the image. There are some mirror polishing in the end of the 14th century, but most of the examples come from 15th century and further. So we won't take that. As you know, as a strict, like the 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 fifteenth century limit. Oh, go on. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are just uh, a couple of gorgeous examples of uh, mirror polishing kits. Not only museum examples, but replicas as well. So next. Oh. Bluing, the favorite part. Everyone wants to have a black armor. Uh, well, as we can see, and you all know, it's only possible for a whole kit. And the specific parts of armor should be uh, approved only together, like a common set. Because it's specific and uh, it's special technique that not anyone could have. So you cannot do this on your uh, basic armor, of course. Go on. Next slide, please. Yeah, also uh, a couple of examples. Plating as a common thing for late armors, late to early modern armors. I think we're all clear on that. Not many people uh, would there want will to be, use. Uh, I, I can expect a question about all this plating. Well, <laughs> we're not going to answer questions about it now, because uh, yeah. the document is still in progress, and we're going to make another live stream after we publish it, if people have any qu more questions about mm -hmm. it. But so far, just so they can know what to expect soon. So, continue, please. We've got questions coming Oh, this is one. This is one of my favorites. The most majestic armor there is. <laughs> yeah, 1560, yes. 1565. That's 60. That's the the second <laughs> second part of the 16th century. Never. I mean, that that's something. Uh, it was. Uh, I think the Polish guy used to have very similar kit some time ago. Yeah, he used but to it, fight for the. For the absolutely rare i mean yes it needs to be seen just like the majesticness <laughs> please continue with the next slide uh dusty franken asking so for example a uh, ga studio brawler kit is not allowed to be blackened the ga studio do that it's it's basically a 1360 armor. kit yeah um so, Heinrich, would, would that be allowed to be blackened? That's more your. I mind. think we do have a. Uh, we do have some examples, you know. Uh, I think we, it's going to be okay. The, what I've seen from the picture, they look really nice. It's not something like ugly blackening, something like that. I, w I wouldn't really, you know, ban them. They're, you know, they look good and they they can be used. I'd say because there is an, a little, you know, few manuscripts where we can see, you know. 
uh, people wearing the black armor. It's really question of uh, what kind of black armor, what the artist tried to, you know, maybe it was his interpretation or something different, you know, so... Yeah, sometimes it can be, like, mixed with uh, uh, mirror armor or... Um like uh, and some of the it's the interpretation thing like you said one of the darker photos it could be like the, the mirror armor could give you impression of having a uh, black armor as well but yeah those images are usually the latter like the late 16th 17th century uh, sources so it is possible to be black Dusty. Dusty, thank you for this question. What we're gonna do? I'm not gonna tell you the exact uh, answer now. We're gonna review this. I will. We'll yes. post those pictures in the, yeah. our group, and we're gonna get all the opinions from all the authenticity officers and experts. And we'll see. We'll come back to uh, about yes, this yes. on the next. It still thing. needs to be published, and you will have at least a week until you know to to watch and review it before we. Uh, make another session in explaining things more clear. So please, next slide. I think this is pretty clear to distinguish the fantasy uh, armor from the proper examples. Uh, okay. <laughs> we don't see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was actually Keeps one of happening. the replica. <laughs> yes. But uh, like I said, you will be able to review it later. Please go on. Yeah, they're going to be the is properly functioning. Uh, files yes hopefully the patches like i said no uh, well i didn't say it but it, the inner patches in your armor in fixing your armor are allowed the outer are not i think that is pretty clear uh, on the left we have museum replica uh, well not replica example museum example and don't let the probably corrosion uh, traces confuse you with the unpolished armor part this is salad it was probably polished to perfection so it is kind of hard to distinguish the corrosion marks in uh, a museum uh, pieces from slight tracing marks but that's a whole another story of interpretation like i said so always ask if you're uncertain but these are only surviving examples so uh, they are here for uh, you to to see how it should look like or how probably it looked like so, go on. Next slide. Painting helmets. Like, it is one of the most, well, not most common, but... In this uh, document, there is only... Uh, well, a part of it will be explained, like, in these slides, but we will try to make a separate document about the armor painting... Uh, well, not armor, the helmet painting because it is a very, so to say, tricky subject in the future. Because they were popular at one time, but they, didn't work. they, they weren't for 20 years, 200 years, but they, they were again. So we'll make sure to explain more and work more about it and research and publish a separate document about it. So please continue. Ludwig, I don't know which, uh, Ludwig just said, uh, haha, so the oldest Bohrer helmet in France is not allowed anymore. I don't know which one is the oldest, but if it's in the picture, it's not going to be allowed, I guess, if it's painted. Yeah, like we already mentioned, rough, rough polishing or uh, modern uh, grinder ma marks should, will not allow be allowed. I mean, they should have haven't been allowed like even earlier, but yeah, go on. Next slide. Annealing, very popular technique in titanium armor. Rainbow armor. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unicorn I, armor. <laughs> unicorn armor, yes. <laughs> I think everything is pretty clear here. There are no surviving examples, or and we don't know how, you know, the... How it should look like uh, after 500 years of using... Well, I mean, I, it is titanium, so... It, Probably yeah. wasn't around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that no, too. no, it's, it's no question. It's titanium. Yeah. And it, it's it's uh, it's changing color. It's no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, rust on your armor. For any any person who's doing this sport and he spent so much money on his kit and the 
you know, he this his kid saving his own life, you know, protecting you. Sh I shouldn't be. I mean, we shouldn't be able to see any kind of rust on your armor. That's just disrespect for your you own. Should kid, you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, just take that sponge. You know, take the sandpaper and sand it off. Polish it. You know, it's really easy. It looks nice. You know, when I see those goblins with uh, all the rusty things, it's just disgusting. Honestly, it's yeah, your own. And another thing to look at it is, you're going to the world championships. You're going to effectively the Olympics. It is really this is what you're going to show up looking like. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, dress dress appropriately for what you're doing. Yeah, true. Next slide, please. I don't think we should oh. even discuss this <laughs> abominations. Yeah, and no. the blade pa patterns. As always, a tricky subject because everyone wants to have something written on their armor or, or not armor the uh, weapons. But uh, tied and clean, not allowed. Uh, historical source patterns are allowed, and uh, small etchings and replicas, of course. So yeah, I think this is replica. also pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's the, the first thing is it should be very clear that your weapon should be cleaned. No impeccable like armors, up. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should clean it before. It sh you should come with a shiny thing instead of a rust. Yes. Okay, Marshall yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, Marshall 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 I don't think this should be like even discussed. You all know that offensive hate speak captions, full died, modern, and again, a rainbow blades are not allowed. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I, I just would like to know uh, if either one of you can read what the sword in the top right says. It's 100, 500k, then. My strength, yeah, my force. My strength. Yeah. 100 to 500k, With my strength. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, next okay. one. Yes, like uh, another popular topic, uh, almost as painted helmets, is etching on the weapon or weapon patterns. I've got a million questions about engraving something on your axe or whatever, so... The thing is, it's similar, like painting a helmet, either they're there in the early Middle Ages or in the very late, like after Middle Ages, 16th, 17th century and further on, or on Oriental and Eastern armor. But basically, there are not many, if any, example in uh, the Western armor regarding that, regarding the, this amount of uh, decorating. It's purely decorative, as you can see. Well, it was probably like meant for, to be used, but no one had the time to put as, as much effort into, you know, engraving this thing. So it is allowed to use weapon with copying historical patterns and etching on the sw small surface like heraldic symbols, workshops, club stamps, basically what we mentioned in the previous slide. Yeah, yeah, usually it's this kind of weapons, etch, etch the weapons they used to made for uh, parades, some kind of like... Yeah, parade uh, armors, yes. Special occasions, not for a fight, you know. Uh, yes, I yes, think. yes. So, oh, finally we reached, reached <laughs> end and like half hour more than we should have. <laughs> but it was fun for us and we're glad that you ask so many questions and we hope that uh, this will become a common thing in the future. Um, the the live stream will be available for you afterwards to watch it, and you can always reach us on our web pages or reach your own um, officer, like officers in your country or national representatives to your countries, or even your team captains who will have the access uh, to reach out to us in private groups as well. So uh, I'm very glad. Uh, I got to introduce you to my senior officers, and uh, they're glad to be like part of this too. I'm sure, Henrikas. 
Henrik is as busy I'm very sorry. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the last question so from Alex Reaper. So what do I do with uh, my pictures of surviving armor parts with forge marks? Uh, we're going to come back to the, in the next stream about the forge marks. As, as it says on the document, the existing forge marks, they, they, I mean, like, if you will do an armor to look like the existing forge marks, for, like sores, they will pass. I mean, the forge marks are allowed, but unfinished armors are not allowed. Some slight forge marks are yes. really acceptable on armor, but unfinished, unpolished armor will be not going to be allowed. Yes. So thank you all for uh, following us, and it was a pleasure for us. I hope. Uh, I mean, at least for. Yeah, it was pleasure. For Larry, not cool. as much. He's like <laughs> nodding, but. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, it, good. You it know, was just uh, I love the questions. I mean, I love a lot of questions because that's what people. They were the smart that's ones. Really yes. Important. Because for yes. us uh, to understand how fighters thinking, you know, without the questions really hard so we we're not on the same level now i can see the pattern of the questions it's easier to understand you know so it's all good it's all nice and i hope next time we're gonna have even more <laughs> Henrik is i'm gonna send all the americans your way since you love the question so much oh my god <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> next time we'll fight for it i've know. got all the italians <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 will, I will make you have a good day so, <laughs> so thank you all and thank you, Lawrence and Henricus, as well. So see you in our future episodes that will be announced on HMBA uh, page, like, at least a couple days ahead, so you know. So good night, all. Bye-bye. Have a good day, guys. Thank you.